Back with another video for you today and last Saturday we did the niche list for spring and today, this Saturday, we have the designer list for spring. So if you're curious to discover my 20 favorite designer fragrances that I recommend to you for spring, please stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian with Smelling Great Fragrance Reviews. Let's jump right into the list. It's 20 fragrances, designer fragrances. Actually, I wanna also let you know that I'm going a little more eclectic today with the list, just like last Saturday with the niche. I'm doing a little different, uh, adding things that are not traditionally uh, popular, just because I like a little more unique uh, fragrances. I don't want them to be traditionally too common. And there's some unique twists here. Some of them uh, I've reviewed. Some of them are very popular, you'll see them. But there's gonna be a lot of Chanel's in this list. Uh, we'll see how many there are, one, two, three, four. And there's a few Dior's as well. Um, and some Guerlain's. So let's get started. At number 20, we're gonna start things off with Chanel. And we're gonna also end things with Chanel at number one. But uh, at number 20, it's a classic fragrance that I wore for the first time in the very, very early 90s. This is called Egoiste by Chanel. So this is, a very, very classy, woody, sandalwood dominant fragrance with the, you know, unique uh, twists of rose in here and some vanillic notes as well. It's kind of um, watered down compared to what it used to be when I first wore it because I felt like the intensity is no longer there. But as a great spring fragrance, something a little different. You don't want ultra fresh for spring because in the spring we still have uh, cooler temperatures, and I think that uh, Egoist is going to be perfect. Now, I was contemplating between this or Platinum Egoist. I think Platinum Egoist is more perfect for summer, at least to me, but for spring, Egoist at number 20 by Chanel. So at number 19, it is from the house of um, Carolina Herrera, and this is um, CH Men Privé. So this is a great, great sugary, leathery, boozy fragrance that I really like, and because it's not so intense, a lot of people say it's, it's pretty long lasting on them. I don't get that. I also get very light experience. It's not like an intense, thick experience. Um, almost transparent. So I find it to be a perfect fragrance for spring because spring is, you know, after all, not necessarily really hot, not necessarily really cold. It's in between and this is kind of an in-between kind of fragrance. So I want a little more depth with the smell. I don't want it fresh because um, I don't want to add freshies to spring because, I mean, even though we have one or two here that are like ultra fresh, I think I want a little more depth for spring because of the fact that it does get cool still. So CH Mem Privé from Carolina Herrera at number 19. At number 18, going to the house of Givenchy, and this is Gentleman Givenchy, this one right here. And so this one I really like because it is a fresher take, well, I, what I should say is I, I prefer the EDP, the intense version of this in the black bottle, but I felt that that might be a little too strong for spring, even though I think I, I totally can get away with wearing it. I wanted to go with something a little fresher, the original. It's a woody uh, kind of iris, and then there's also this like really uh, big pear fruity note in here. It's really, really uh, dominant kind of dominates with the, the iris in here. So it's really, really lovely. And I find this one to be perfect um, for spring. Even though I prefer the EDP, I can definitely wear this one. And the pear note is unique for me. It's not one of the, the notes that I really like seek after, like go after, not like apples, because I really love apples and fragrances. Pears kind of seem flat to me. It's like not necessarily a really loud smell in general, even when you smell a pear. But the skin smells stronger than the actual fruit. So this is actually the fruit. And it's really nice. I think I feel like this is a perfect fragrance for spring. So this is Gentleman Givenchy from Givenchy at number 18. At number um, 17, we're going to a classic that was relaunched several years ago from the house of Dior. And this is Jules, this one right here. I brought this back from Europe. I don't see this being sold here in the States. It's a classic from the 80s. It's been redone and I quite like it. It's very, very classic. I mean, you gotta like those classic fragrances. Uh, personally, I think this is kind of sort of the answer for YSL's, um, uh, what do you call it, um, Kuros? I think this is kind of the, the Dior answer. Not necessarily similar in style. There's no leather here. It's very fresh and aromatic, 
but uh, really, you know, kind of smells like a powerhouse from the 80s, but very, very watered down. So this is Jules, or Jules, from Dior at number 17. And speaking of those fresh fragrances, this is, here's one of them. It's a new launch from the house of Maison Margiela. This is under the lemon trees and really, really delicious uh, sugary uh, lemon fragrance. Now this one I like because it's not your tart citrus or lemon. It's got sweetness to it. There's a mate note here, so it's kind of green touch. To me, it smells like you're sipping on a um, limoncello from uh, Italy, and it's inspired by it Italy sitting under the lemon trees, and you know, the lemons are there, you can smell them. It's that kind of a fragrance. I find it to be also very, very cozy. So in those warmer days in spring, this is actually going to be perfect. So this is Under the Lemon Trees from Maison Margiela. I really love this one. And this is a house that continues to surprise me for designers. It is more on the expensive side. The fragrances from this house are about $100, $130 for 100 ml, so they're definitely pricier. But they are also a little more niche leaning rather than your straight on in your face designer fragrances. So check that out. I think the most popular from this house is By the Fireplace. So that is Under the Lemon Trees by Maison Margiela at number 16. At number 15, we're going to a vetiver, and this is from the house of Lalique, and this is Ancre Noir Sport. Now this one I really, really love. It's vetiver after all. There's a little bit of a, a dark, inky, leathery vetiver touch, but it's all very bright and fresh. So if you like your vetiver fragrances, not necessarily dark, earthy, woody, inky, this is definitely one to try. Um, in fact, the Sport name, I think maybe it's not necessarily correct, but I can see it's a marketing thing that they're doing and calling it sport because, you know, you, you, it's a sporty fragrance because at the top you've got this like grapefruit note. It's really, really zingy and citrusy and a little bit of spicy as well because the grapefruits go a little spicy, almost to the point of the spiciness of ginger, but not quite. And you've got that experience at the top here with uh, the vetiver. It's actually really, really lovely. This one actually kind of smells like the now discontinued Anikutal vetiver not the eau de cologne version, but the classic version. And it's a great alternative to that. And that was a unisex offering. I believe it was unisex. Anyway, I find this one to be a very unisex offering for a vetiver. Um, check it out. It's uh, Lalique's Ancre Noir uh, Sport. And that's at number 15. At number 14, go into the house of Azzaro. And this is Chrome Aqua, this one right here. Look at that beautiful colored bottle. I really love this colored bottle. Um, the fragrance itself I reviewed recently. Uh, we did a full bottle giveaway of this one as well uh, via Sathra Bon. Um, but this one is a complete departure from the original Chrome uh, Adza by Azaro, I, which I wore back in the mid 90s, mid to late 90s. Uh, I found that fragrance to be very metallic. Here, it's nothing like that at all. It's just a <clears throat> capitalizing on the name, of course, Chrome. But it's a great take on, on this fragrance. I find it to be really, really unique. It kind of uh, dries down a little bit like Aqua de Joe, but it's a complete original fragrance. I find it to be very crunchy and crisp. At the top, you've got a, cr a crisp apple note. And then also there's grapefruit here too. And in the heart, you've got the sage note. Um, so it goes very, very herbal and aromatic. The, the word crunchy comes to mind with this one. It smells very crisp. You can almost smell that crunchiness, uh, if that makes sense. Also in the heart, you've got the marine notes, and it's not ultramarine or aquatic. Um, and you know me with aquatics, I don't, I don't really like them, but I really do love this one. It dries down to a really beautiful woody uh, fragrance. So check it out. This is Chrome Aqua from Azzaro, and that's at number 14. At number 15 is gonna be a little more of an intense fragrance. It's from the house of Prada, and this is Prada Black, this one right here. I only have one Prada, I was gonna feature Prada Loam, I'm kind of burnt down on that fragrance for some reason, but I really, really love this one. And you guys probably think that I was ragging on it when I reviewed it, I thought I compared it to, uh, you know, Bulgari Black. It does remind me of Bulgari Black, but it is its own unique uh, fragrance, of course. And I really do enjoy it. It's, um, I don't have Bulgari Black in my collection currently, and when I crave that smell, I, I pull for this one. Um, it's not overly intense either, even though it's called black, you expect, you know, dark fragrance, uh, a very, very strong fragrance. It doesn't come off that way, but it's a great, great smell. It's powdery, it's vanillic, it's woody, it's, it's just beautiful. This is Prada Luna Rossa Black. Really great fragrance from the house of Prada, and that is at number 13. So at number 12, we're going to the same parent company as Prada of Pouge, uh, the umbrella of Pouge includes Prada, of course, they own a lot of different brands, and of course they have Valentino, and this is Valentino Uomo. This is kind of like a, 
a different take on uh, Dior Homme, if that makes sense. For me, I think it was inspired by Dior Homme. Uh, it's just, you know, when you have something very uh, successful, you want to kind of capitalize on it and uh, make your own version of it. So I think it, it is, although it smells somewhat close, if you're smelling them um, far apart, it might remind you of Dior Homme, but when you compare them side by side, there are definitely nuances here. This one goes a little more gourmand to me and also a little nutty. There's that hazelnut note that's in here. So this one actually, I find it to be perfect for spring. It's not ultra strong uh, because I would use the uh, intense version for uh, late fall, winter, and early spring, but for general spring fragrance, I, I find the Valentino Womo to be perfect for it. So that is at number 12. And at number 11, uh, it is a different fragrance from the House of Costume National. This is a fragrance that, from a house that's not necessarily hyped. It's a smaller house, a smaller fashion house from Italy. And this fragrance is a fragrance, a very, very unique fragrance that not a lot of people talk about. This is Cyber Garden from Costume National. A very green fragrance. It has a vinyl note in it, and it's all very, very green and very, very unique. It's one of a kind fragrance. If you like the smell of vinyl, like the shower, uh, vinyl um, shower uh, curtain. It, it kind of reminds me of that or perhaps even like vinyl records. Um, but you have lots of green notes, green leaves, green grass, and lots of greenery in here. That's why the bottle is uh, green of course and it's called Cyber Garden. It's very very futuristic uh, things like that. Underrated fragrance, underrated house. Check it out. I think it's perfect for spring because spring is all about green, you know new birth, new life, flowers, things like that. And I thought this was uh, perfectly suited. Do check it out, because I do recommend this one. So this is Cyber Garden from Costume National at number 11. At number 10, this is the top 10. We're starting the top 10 again with Chanel. This is Bleu de Chanel, EDP or Parfum. So this one I like here, it is more on the fresh side. And I, I like to include this one here because whenever I want something not necessarily smart, I, I, I'm not saying it's a stupid fragrance, but if I don't want anything complicated, this is something I would pull for. Notice I will not have Sauvage on this list, but I do have one of the flankers of Sauvage, Eau Sauvage in here. But I do like Chanel's Bleu de Chanel. I find it to be very classy, and it's a, it's a dumb pull, a dumb reach, if that makes sense. When I don't want to think about it, I want something that smells good. It's not overly complicated, overly overwhelming, just something that smells great. I mean, get, it's great with uh, my chemistry and Garner's compliments, and then it's gonna be Bleu de Chanel at number 10. So that's at number 10 from Chanel. One more from Chanel, and then we have the very uh, first uh, number one at uh, Chanel. This is Allure Homme Edition Blanche. Now this one, it's delicious. It's a lemony take on Allure Homme. Now I would include Allure Homme probably more in a summer list, even though it has some depth to it. I, I would definitely add that there. This one to me is more of a spring and fall fragrance. Um, lemons in here uh, make it a more spring thing for me, but lemons pretty much are enjoyed all year round, so I would include it in a fall list as well. But this one's really, really de delicious. It's tonka beans, it's, it's lemons, it's creamy, there's some vanillic touches, and of course woody touches. It's just really a really delicious fragrance. Um, it's perfect for spring, I think. Um, it, it smells <laughs> really creamy. Like as soon as you put your uh, nose to it, it smells ultra creamy. So almost like a, almost like a, sh a lemon chiffon because lemons mixed with creamy uh, milk or cream just gives you uh, that kind of an experience. So very, very delicious fragrance from Chanel Allure Homme Edition Blanche. That's at number nine. At number eight, we're going to a fragrance from a house called um, Dunhill. And this is their latest fragrance, Century. Um, stay tuned for my full review of this one. I had it shot for a while, but I haven't been able to air it because uh, there's been other things to air. But I like this one. It's really a really uh, a great release. Even though in my review I might have said something like I I'm not. It's been done before because it smells like something else. To me, it smells a little bit like fragrances like Santal 33 from Le Labo. It's got this uh, very very sandal woody. Uh, experience. The other fragrance it reminds me of is uh, Louis Vuitton's Au Hazard or ha A Hazard. Uh, that sandalwood is very, very prominent. It reminds me of those two fragrances because Louis Vuitton's Au Hazard reminded me of Le Labo Santal 33. But this one to me smells like laundry, like clean sheets. Like it's a, it's almost like a dumb reach fragrance similar to this. Uh, but this one has a little more depth with the woodiness of the sandalwood. 
Uh, and the sandalwood acts very crunchy once again. It's chippy, like, like a shavings of um, sandalwood are hitting your face. If, just imagine that, and that's how I experience this fragrance. But it's very, very clean. It smells like laundry sheets, like very freshly washed, uh, slightly scented laundry detergent uh, on the sheet, and you can smell it on here. It's that great of a fragrance. It's again, once again, I'll say it, it's, it's almost like a dumb reach fragrance because it's ultra clean and it's not overly complex, but it's a great release. It's not a lot of people talking about it. Anyway, Century by Dunhill is at number eight. At number seven, go into the house of Armani. We have one Armani on this list. This is Aqua de Joe Profumo. This might be a little more intense, but I think for the cooler days, I don't, I think it, it works all year round pretty much, but it's a great fragrance to feature uh, for a spring list with designer fragrances. And this one, um, it's great. It's great. It's what I remember how um, Aqua de Joe smelling when I first started wearing it in 97. It, was, it had depth to it back then. It was very, very uh, intense for what I was experiencing back then. Now this, the Profumo, smells like what I remember wearing back then. So it has a little more depth to it. There's a patchouli here, uh, there's that incense in here, and then it's just whatever else is in uh, Aqua de Joe is in here as well. So it's been intensified, given a backbone pretty much uh, from what the original Aqua de Joe has become. And so I prefer this one and I really love it. So check it out, Aqua de Joe Profumo. And at number six, we're going to the house of Dior once again, and this is Dior Homme, this one right here. This is a scent that I can never get tired of. I put it at number five because it's not the, of course, the parfum, but the smell is just beautiful. This one actually is a lot fresher than the parfum, even the Diorum Intense, which I started using recently because I just love the scent. The smell is just magical. It's probably one of the best smells ever created, ever created for men, women, whatever. Um, the, the smell is just original. And then they created that intense, it intensified it. It was that smell that even got better from what this is. And then they created the parfum because you got it more intense now. Those are a little too strong for spring. Uh, so I would go with this, but me, I don't have any rules. I pull for both, uh, both of those two. But I think this is more spring appropriate. Uh, just go easy on the trigger. It's not like a freshie or anything. So for cooler days, this is perfect. So this is Dior Homme from the house of Dior, one of my favorite designer houses. And my second favorite designer house is next with the, uh, the only fragrance on this list from this house, Mugler. This is Alien Man. I love this one. Not a lot of people talk about this one. I don't know why. Uh, it's very, very underrated and it's just, I don't know, I think it rubs people the wrong way. Um, I've heard people say it smells like a salad, it's too green, it's too, I don't know, something. But in here, for me, this smells like licorice and I absolutely love licorice. Um, I think what they have here is fennel. And fennel does smell a little bit like licorice anyway, not ultra licorice-y. But to me, I experienced licorice. This reminds me of B-Men uh, when Mugler had B-Men back in 1994. No, no, 2004 is when they launched B-Men. Um, I love that fragrance. That one had the Mugler patchouli DNA. This one doesn't. But the, 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 the licorice, the anise in here, or the fennel in this case, reminds me of that fragrance. I love it. I think it's a great, great scent for uh, spring. You should check it out if you don't know it. Watch some of my reviews, the first impressions and a full-on review of this one. This is Mugler's Alien Man at number uh, five. At number four, we're going to the house of Guillain and this is Habi Rouge Eau de Toilette. I didn't put the EDP on here. I felt that would be a little too strong. And this one actually is a nice balance of the woody notes, the vanilla, of course. Um, and then, of course, we've got the citrus at the top. This is more citrus forward rather than vanilla and the woody notes, whereas the EDP is reversed. You have less citruses and you got the woody and the vanilla more. Um, it's a great classy men's fragrance. I love this one. And I, I wanted to go back to some of the classics and that's why you're seeing some classics here. Um, I think any confident man should be able to pull this one off. It might come off a bit too vanillic for some. And uh, the truth is this was inspired by the very, very popular Shalimar for women. So this is Guillain's Habit Rouge Eau de Toilette at number four. And going to a parent family LVMH fragrance once again, as this is from the house of Dior. This is a fragrance I reviewed recently. This is Eau Sauvage Extreme right here. This is so good. 
I really, really love this one. This is basically taking the original Eau Sauvage and adding a little more depth to it. It's definitely not the Parfum, which I absolutely love, but this is to die for great. It has a little more legs compared to the uh, original Eau de Toilette. Uh, because it has a little more depth and it has a little bit more longevity and there's also a little bit of a soapy quality here i've worn it so many times because i just love it i wouldn't call it a dumb reach fragrance like this one but almost because it's just a very very typically good quality fragrance for men and this is from the house of dior eau sauvage extreme i love it and it's going to be perfect for spring 2019. Next at number two, we're going to the house of Guerlain once again. We're keeping it in the LVMH family. This is Vetiver Extreme. I wanted to include one more Vetiver here and this is going to be just perfect. This is, um, I guess, I don't really call it really extreme vetiver from the compared to the original vetiver and I have a video comparing these two, the vetiver original and the extreme vetiver. Uh, from Guerlain. Check that out if you're curious. And the color of the juice is also a little different. Um, to me, this one has a little bit of a licorice anise uh, accord more than a note in it. And it takes the, the fragrance, the vetiver, the original vetiver, to a little bit of a unique direction. Not necessarily intense or extremified, if that makes sense. I think the performance is almost the same as the original. But if you are a, a fan of the original, if you've worn it a lot, and you're kind of craving something a little twist. You're like, okay, I'm bored of my vetiver fragrance because there's something else I could do. I do love Guerlain vetiver, but do they have a flanker? And they do, it's the extreme. So check it out. I think it's gonna be great for spring. I love this one and it's very, very green fragrance. It's vetiver extreme from Guerlain at number two. And last but not least at number one, it is a Chanel, as I was saying at the beginning of the video. And this is a fragrance that I fell in love with over again after I had stopped wearing it. And in fact, it is another flanker to the very popular Allure Homme series. Series. This is Allure Homme Sport O Extreme, and I'm head over heels for this one. It's just a to die for designer fragrance. Smells very, very original. Um, it's ultra tonka beany, and whereas here you've got the lemons, you've got marine notes here, but not ultra strong. It's very, very faint traces of it. At least on me, I get faint traces of it. But um, there's a fresh quality, but there's also a deep, dark, woody quality as well. So you've got a lot of different unique things happening here. But for me, what I get most is the tonka bean and a very, very fresh marine smell, not necessarily aquatic, if that makes sense. It smells like the sea breeze, but um, with um, not like a very fishy um, aquatic touch. There's also some citruses in here as well, but not as strong as... Uh, this one. The lemon is really strong here. Here, I don't think it's lemon. I think it's more like bergamot or mandarin orange. I wanted to put this one at number one because it is a great, great designer and I think it's perfect for spring. Absolutely perfect because it just fits spring for me. The sporty touches and then the, the you know, the tonka bean and the woody touches with the citruses. It's, it's a great fragrance. So this is not number one. This is Allure Homme Sport Eau Extreme at number one. And there you have it. That's my list. Those are my designer fragrances for spring. 20 designer fragrances for spring, guys. What do you think of this list, guys? Do you like these fragrances? Are you a fan of them? Do you have any of them? Or have you been eyeing some of them and you've been wanting to pick them up? Guys, let me know what you're going to be wearing for spring if it's different from these fragrances. And if it's something new or something I haven't discovered yet, do let me know so that I can check it out and include it on a future list. Other than that, please like this video, please share it, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye.